The millennium goals defined in the year 2000 were for 15 years a true indicator for major uh, aid agencies. Will the same thing uh, be the case for the sustainable development goals? And a crucial question is, are they well adapted to the most fragile nations, which are a geopolitical challenge and an ethical challenge for the rest of the world? What is a fragile country? A country that is unable to address uh, the basic needs of its population, healthcare, education, or even security and justice. So in order to understand the problem, it uh, would be a good idea to review the history of uh, international aid. International aid is a product of the Cold War. It's, uh, it was designed to avoid uh, countries that were were running into difficulties from falling into communism. So the objectives varied uh, throughout the years, and from the late 70s, 80s, and 90s, the key objective of aid was that to try to solve the problems caused by great financial crises in the 1970s, and which had uh, flattened the uh, the budgets of many developing countries. So structural development was implemented, debt was refinanced, uh, which for ideological, ideological reasons uh, debt was not cancelled, and this created a number of social disasters which are well known and which uh, uh, are re-emerging in countries such as Greece where whole pains of the social system uh, were destroyed by successive cuts. So the Millennium Development Goals, defined in the late 90s, crystallized in uh, the UN General Assembly in 2000, are focused on social issues and particularly the reconstruction of health and education institutions that have been systematically dismantled by by, the, uh, uh, by initiatives. Uh, in that respect. So the Millennium Development Goals, uh, yes, all is well and good. But in fact, when you look closer and take a step back, you will notice that there were four a great lacks in it. Farming was absolutely not discussed, which is uh, quite incredible when you think of it, because most poor people are people who live in the countryside and who are farmers and ranchers, and the best way to help them is to improve uh, productivity. And then the problem of shanty towns, under-integrated neighborhoods where there's no water, no electricity, no road access, and, uh, and no sanitation whatsoever, of course. And this is evoked in a tiny uh, little chapter, but not seriously addressed. Third, demography. Many of these countries have uncontrolled demography, which has a huge impact on uh, the environment, because excessive democracy destroys the environment and can easily lead uh, to uh, poverty traps. And no one discussed them in the MDGs. And in fact, it's 0.2% of international aid dedicated to uh, demographics. And then another important point, countries in conflict or just exiting conflicts, uh, that was not evoked at all. And we know that it's one of the great challenges that the international community needs to face today. Another problem, another worrying problem, is the fact that people thought when these MDGs were designed that the resources would be additional resources that would come on top of uh, uh, the usual uh, money paid by donors. But there were no additional resources because the resources that were dedicated to the MDGs replaced the traditional, conventional uh, development aid 
So for a number of very poor countries, uh, there were funding deficits in farming, in infrastructure, uh, urban infrastructure, and nothing was done in many other sectors. So to return to uh, the issues of sustainable development, we must uh, remember how ambitious they are. They're very heterogeneous because they cover microeconomic, measurable aspects, and laudable ambitions, and sometimes even uh, universalist dreams and utopias. So it's very difficult to categorize them. But the process is interesting because unlike the MDGs, which only aimed, which was only geared at poor countries, the SDGs apply to every country in the world. They are designed to address the fundamental needs of countries such as China, the United States, France, Afghanistan, Niger, or Mali. So it's a very exciting prospect, largely focused on the environment, of course and which personally I think is extremely attractive, particularly for my grandchildren, uh, because I hope they will not need to suffer uh, the environmental disasters that are being predicted, particularly if Mr. Trump continues to act the way he is. So the process is essentially interesting for a rich and emerging economies uh, for whom the environmental impact is significant and that otherwise in very poor, very fragile countries, uh, where the goals will be very different, most of these SDGs are very difficult to implement. Fortunately, there's the penultimate uh, goal, goal 16, establishing a prosperous and peaceful society, which may address the issues and concerns of very poor countries. How could one not agree? But what, are, what is the great emergency for fragile countries, countries that are running into great difficulties? First one is employment. And employment needs to be through farming because large part of uh, the population are farmers. And that has been forgotten and overlooked by donors since the 80s. And training too, and infrastructure marginalized and everything focused on social issues. So these, the first concern is jobs, employment, and there are no precise guidelines to address that. Second issue, second emergency in these uh, fragile countries, demographics, as I was saying earlier, birth control. Behind me is a graph that shows you the evolution of uh, the uh, fertility rate, uh, namely the number of children per woman. And you can see that uh, for the countries of the Maghreb, of North Africa, uh, drop from seven, eight children to two or three, uh, in about 40 years, there has occurred what is known as a demographic transition, but the countries of the Sahel uh, have not started their demographic transition. These countries are are going to be stuck in a demographic trap. Niger had a population of 3 million upon independence. Now there are 20 million. And in 2035, there will be probably 42 to 43 million. And in 2050, between 60 and 90 million for a country that has 8% of its total surface that is arable. So the uh, problem, this uh, family planning and birth control, is uh, is a major issue. And then there's the issue of political reform, which is evoked nowhere in the SDGs. What do these countries require? The tension needs to be relieved. They need honest elections, not fake ballots. Uh, there needs to be a true struggle against political and economic. Uh, Exclusion, some sectors of sections of the population are ostracized and rebel. Look at the center of Mali with the Pearl people who have created a liberation front uh, because they are being ostracized. And then all of these issues are political in nature. One must remember that donors are in a purely technical position. They really do not want to get involved in politics. 
And uh, in this respect, they are powerless. And final great emergency for the fragile countries is the problem of security. Everyone knows that there can be no security without development and no development without security. But the major aid agencies uh, who repeat that take no care of security, while it is absolutely essential to review constitutions to protect minorities that are often oppressed, to uh, create instruments that are both efficient, non-corrupt, and truly at the service of populations and not at the service of those in power who are predators, uh, rebuild a regalian system. Armies must be multi-ethnic armies. They must represent the diversity of a population. They must be subjected to, uh, to power the gendarme force and the police force and must not be additional predators and the judiciary must be honest, available, accessible to all and not corrupt. The administration must be devoted to the common good. It is possible, but it's difficult, especially if there is no significant support from outside. And it's also indispensable to rebuild states. It's indispensable because if there is no state, the mafia replaces it. This is the circulation of cocaine from Latin America, circulating throughout West Africa before it reaches its key market in Western Europe. All of this, reconstruction of the state, a settlement of a number of uh, 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 very uh, tough political problems, is, uh, these things are difficult, costly, uh, very touchy politically, but, uh, the, uh, but SDG 16, that wants to create peaceful societies, uh, will never come true if there's not a radical change of paradigm uh, in the thinking of development agencies. And I think that rather uh, than merely addressing the fragile countries, there must be at least 30 or 40 that are problematic for the international community. I think for these countries, it would have been much more effective and much easier to correct the uh, goals of the Millennium Development Goals and to follow the advice of Ashraf Ghani. Who is Ashraf Ghani? He's the president of Afghanistan before being president of a country which unfortunately uh, completely went down the drain uh, for various reasons. He was a professor of economics before that and he formalized the issue of reconstruction of fragile states. And he says specifically that to address global problems, the most severe global problems such as poverty, terrorism, which obviously we can see everywhere, and particularly in the Sahel region, aid must refocus its action towards the construction of functional and solid states, and that is overlooked in the SDGs. Thank you.